What is up YouTube? I wanted to make this quick video to show how I almost got scammed on this Audi S4, which to the untrained eye looks like a clean title, low mileage, rare Audi that's being sold for a ridiculously low price. Stay tuned and I'll explain exactly what happened here. All right, so a little bit of background here. I was not in the market for an S4. I more or less just occasionally am cruising around Copart, um, happened to put on some filters and see what was in my area, buy it now, and found this S4. Um, it actually was just sold, so this was up until a few hours ago. The, the bidding was live. There was about a day left, and it was only going for about 2000 or so dollars on auction, um, but it also had a buy now option of $6,000 flat. So I took a quick look at this and said, Tennessee certificate of title. Okay, so it's got a clean title. Damage says minor dents and scratches, which is normal with a clean title vehicle on Copart. Started looking through again, seeing with manual transmission, which is a rare option for an S4. And then seeing it had keys and was run and drive. From here, I started looking through pictures, trying to find any like dents, scratches. I mean, for the most part, this thing looked very clean from what I could tell, even the interior. Um, and the interior, from an option standpoint, you can see it's got carbon fiber trim. Again, the manual transmission. It's got the white and black Napa leather. I mean, this is a beautifully specked out S4. The image of the dash, it looks like it's got a light bulb out, but all things considered, uh, the temp gauge looks like it's holding midway through like it should be. The RPM gauge is showing a um, little less than 1,000 RPM, so it's clearly on. It's running and running, at least, right? So everything here really looked like it, it, very, it checked out. Engine bay looked clean. Looks like it's got something going on with the intake, just an aftermarket tube. Someone opened up the airbox for a little more sound. But the engine, again, looked very, very clean. So I... I couldn't sleep after seeing this. Again, at the time it was going for buy it now of $6,000. With fees and things, I calculated that should come out somewhere around like $7,200 that I would walk away with this S4. So the first step here was trying to figure out, all right, is this a good deal? So started looking around at S4s and finding out that manual transmission S4s, B8 S4s, which is what this is, uh, are, are very rare. They didn't make a lot of manuals. Not many people optioned it with manuals. Most of them were DSGs. So I started looking at the market for these cars. This is just a sampling. But you can see, you know, the cheapest manual that I could find on cars.com is 15 grand with 150,000 miles. So you go down to cars that had less than 100,000. You're talking 17, 18 grand. Here's a 2010 with 85,000 miles. So the car on Copart only has 4,000 more than this. This car is going for almost $20,000. The, the more research I did on the market, the more interested I became in this car uh, because the manuals are so rare. I actually somehow found that this color combination with the manual transmission, I believe this is like one of 11 that was produced for this year in 2010. So again, just further validating that this was a rare find and this price looked ridiculously good. Over the, the next few days, I decided to invest a little bit of money investigating. Again, didn't need this car, really don't have the space for it. But for the money, I'm like, hey, I can buy this car, maybe put a little bit, even a couple grand if I need to, into maintenance, drive it for a little while, have some fun with it, and sell it, and probably double my money. So the more serious I got, I decided to start investing some money into um, VIN checks. So I started with an auto check because it's cheaper than a Carfax. You know, the auto check further validated that this was a good deal. No issues found, no accidents, no title issues, nothing. There is a buyback guarantee for auto check. It showed there were three owners. Uh, it started out in Pennsylvania, last owned in, in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm currently in Nashville. This was last owned in Knoxville. The odometer, very similar amount to what is showing on the dash. Um, again, that was one thing I didn't mention, the odometer on the dash is showing the same mileage that Copart has, 89034, and that checked out with the auto check report. The last reported mileage was 86690. So from here, I'm getting very interested, actually set up an auto bid master account, um, which is a broker account to buy through Copart. In Tennessee, you can't buy cars directly through Copart. You have to buy them through a broker account. So auto bid master is the broker that I was going through even bought the membership for $130, knowing that I could cancel it, so I'm gonna get my $130 back. But at the time, bought the membership, 
uh, put a deposit down. So I, I queued myself up ready to buy this thing, but still hadn't pulled the trigger. I'm somewhat risk averse. I am all about calculated risks. I you know, will take a risk all day long, but I'm going to do as much due diligence as I can up front to make sure that I'm not going to get scammed or, or otherwise. So auto check was run, searched the VIN on Google, trying to do more research, couldn't really find anything with a VIN search on Google. I ended up just calling around to dealers. So I called a, an Audi dealer in Nashville. That dealer hadn't seen the car, so that was that was useless. Ended up calling the only Audi dealer in Knoxville, and they gave me some interesting information that this car came in uh, for a 55,000 mile service, and then they had another record that it came in 2022 for a new battery. So that was another good check mark for this car, right? Hey, it's been deal serviced at the dealer at least a few times, and as recently as last year that it had a new battery from the dealer. This is all adding up to like, hey, this is a super clean, rare manual transmission Audi with an interesting color combo, good in interior spec that's been dealer serviced, only has three owners, clean title, no accidents, etc. And it's going for $6,000. I'm like kind of freaking out here. I really don't need this thing, but I'm also thinking I cannot pass this car up. For anyone that doesn't know, these B8, B8 and a half S4s with a 3.0 uh, supercharged V6. They're super reliable, especially with the manual transmission. There's not many things that go wrong with them. People have, you know, 200 plus thousand miles on these things, no issues. I mean, your, your normal maintenance that you're going to have to do with higher mileage, you, you do. There's a PCV valve that goes wrong occasionally. Uh, manual transmission is going to need a clutch. But as long as you do basic maintenance, these 3.0 T's are pretty reliable. So that was another thing too, like knowing that these things are pretty reliable, I figured it might not have been that big of a gamble buying this. If this was the previous generation S4, I would, wouldn't even touch it because of the timing chain issues. So anyway, did some issues about repair costs, you know, figured that I might have to put a couple grand in, into repairs, but even if I did that, it should still be out on top again, based on these values that I was seeing for similar S4s. Um, even did research into like, what would it look, look like parting this thing out? Uh, you know, if, if I couldn't buy it, drive it, sell it, you know, and, and it was for some reason a lemon, I went through and made a spreadsheet of kind of part costs that I was finding and just parting out the drivetrain interior and some, some other miscellaneous things, I should have got my seven some thousand dollars back just parting it out. So I, I made myself very comfortable with, with taking the risk on this car and I was ready to buy it yesterday. I, I, was about to make an offer and that little voice in my head said, you should run a Carfax report for one more check. So that's what I did. I decided to run a Carfax report and I spent the, I ended up buying three reports just, just to have some extras. So I ended up spending the 60 some dollars. So at this point, between the auto check and the Carfax, I basically invested about $100 into investigating this thing. And this is what the Carfax told me. Uh, no accidents, great. Service records, great. Three owners, lease, personal, whatever. Last done in Tennessee. All this checks out. Last reported odometer reading, 180,597. That is much, much different than the <laughs> 89,034 shown on the dash in this Audi and the same mileage that's being reported by Copart. So this was my first huge red flag and immediately seeing this, I was like, okay, this was too good to be true. Let's try to figure out what's going on here. So from here, I started walking through the Carfax, which by the way, is infinitely more detailed than the auto check that I pulled. In the future, I will no longer be using auto check. It is very much worth it just to pay the money on the Carfax. Some of you may be saying, yes, you're dumb. You shouldn't have run, ran the auto check. Well, I learned my lesson this time. I will only be running Carfaxes in the future. The Carfax showed much more detailed information. Some of it very interesting. Um, it actually showed that this car had a really robust service history. You know, the people that owned it were servicing it at dealers. If not dealers, they looked like very reputable independent shops. They were doing it at regular service intervals. A lot of things were replaced on this car throughout its life. Um, as I started walking through, like there was, there's tons of stuff, but the, the biggest thing was that the mileage it has now is what was recorded in 2013. And it's very clear. There's no way that all of these shops re recorded the incorrect mileage. 
So moving down 2017, it had 116,000 miles. 2020 reported 142,000 miles. Keep going down. 2022, you're at up to 160 some thousand miles. The last reported odometer reading in March of 2023, which is this year, is 180, 597 miles. That was serviced at MF Auto in Knoxville, Tennessee. So this car actually has 100,000 miles more than Copart is saying it does. For one reason or another, I haven't figured out exactly what someone did to tamper with this, but the mileage reporting is clearly not consistent and that's reason enough not to buy this car. Now to add insult to injury, I decided, hey, this car looks like it was really well serviced and I know these cars have been known to run in the hundreds of thousands of miles. And like buying a car that has had this much work done, I mean, if you look at some of these services, you know, in 2021, it had its entire AC system essentially redone, it had uh, various gaskets replaced, drive belts, thermostat. I mean, that's a big job. Before that, in 2021, it had the clutch done, looked like it had probably a rear main seal done. This, this car has had thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars of work done in the past few years. So I'm like, man, even at two, three thousand dollars, like this is still an interesting car, even though it's super high mileage. So I was still mildly interested given the, the service history. And I kind of figured, hey, as one last shot, why don't I call around to some of these shops and just see if they can tell me anything? I thought maybe some of these shops would be like, oh my God, we know that car, you have to buy it. That thing is, is mint, blah, blah, blah. Like sometimes you can get that type of thing. And most of the time, for anyone that doesn't know, like calling shops like this, if they're a reputable shop, they're going to be completely okay with providing you information. They're happy to do it. They want to provide you good service. And that's what I found with both of these shops. So just a plug for these guys. If anyone watching this video is in Knoxville and wants a good recommendation, I called both of these shops, European Auto Garage and MF Auto Inc. And both gave me awesome information. So I decided to call them earlier today and just figure out, hey, let's just check on the odometer reading and make sure the Carfax is checking out with their records. So first I called European Auto Garage and they basically went through and gave me a lot of the same information the Carfax was showing and the lady told me in 2022 alone this guy spent, I know it was a male because she, she said his name, I'm not going not gonna to disclose any names or anything, but this, this guy spent over $5,000 in 2022, and I think she said a similar amount in 2021. Um, this was when the big clutch service and everything was done. So just in two years, this guy had spent over $10,000 on service at this one shop. Um, again, just kind of adding up to like the, wow, this car was well-maintained, and a lot of the big stuff has been done. So realistically, if someone was to buy this, it would still probably be a good deal at three three thousand four thousand dollars so that was the first shop you know helped kind of triangulate information and did validate that the mileage is much higher than core parts showing now the real kicker is when i called this second shop it took the the man a minute on the phone to uh give me some information and the first thing he came back with was the last time it was serviced on this date it came in and the notes showed it had some knocking so they did some diagnosis including a compression test and leak down test and it showed 100% leak down on cylinder 2 as well as a spark plug with a bent electrode. My jaw dropped when I heard that. In March of this year the owner of this car took it in for service and found out that the car had a catastrophic engine issue. Um, likely bottom end issue I don't know for sure. Could could have been something with the top end and, and maybe a valve sticking. I, I don't know. But regardless, there was a major issue where one cylinder had no compression, which adds up with the fact that the car is now up for sale. Um, and this owner dumped it likely after this service appointment. Now, I have no idea what happened in between March and December of this year. The, the shop didn't fix it. That's what they said was those were the service notes, but they didn't they didn't go ahead and fix it because I, I believe it this point, the owner realized he need, needed a new engine. But all that being said, doing the due diligence and calling the shop really told me what I needed to know was not only is there a mileage discrepancy, but this vehicle may need a new engine. If not a new engine, it needs significant work um, because one of the cylinders doesn't have compression. All that being said, I am very weary and also frankly kind of irritated at Copart. I mean, clearly someone tampered with the mileage, whether they swapped the cluster 
I've even seen there's devices that you can plug into some Audis that will alter the mileage and basically put the mileage reading incorrect. But regard regardless of the situation, this car has around 100,000 more miles than are being reported, and it's got a bad engine. Clearly someone cleared the codes on it, right, because it's not showing any codes, so that's as easy as just wiping the codes out of the computer. That's why there's no check engine light shown. So someone did a bunch of work to get this car to Copart in a state through pictures of looking fine, and realistically, the car's not fine. It's got way more mileage and it's got a blown engine. And the more I thought about it, I wanted to make this video for anyone that is considering buying a Buy It Now car from Copart. Just word of warning that even the cleanest and rarest of cars like this have baggage. Um, and this just further validated that for me. You know, my, my two lessons learned are, are that is just don't trust Copart. If you're going to buy a car that you want to use as a daily driver or whatever else, don't do it. You know, if you're a European car mechanic who has the ability to fix the engine on this and, and can get it at a great price, great, go, go ahead and do it. If you're someone who's looking for a daily driver, I would 100% never buy a buy it now car from Copart. It's just the simple facts. The second thing I learned, always use a Carfax. Don't trust other VIN reports. If I wouldn't have pulled that Carfax, I very likely would have bought this car based on the facts that I had up to that point. And I'm extremely glad that I didn't. So investing the hundred or some dollars between the, the two VIN reports was absolutely worth it. The one last thing I will say is a lot of people may say, well, why don't you go look at the car in person? That is an option. Unfortunately, you have to be a Copart member to do that. This lot is only about 40 minutes from me. I, I could have done that. Um, I probably could have found a loophole to get there, but you do have to pay for a membership to, to get into a Copart. Some may allow you to pay like an entrance fee, but I couldn't do that. So I, I didn't really have the ability to go look at it, but that probably would have been the, the next best thing to do. But even in that case, since you can't drive it, if the car was running good enough, I don't know that I would have found all the information that I needed to, to completely rule this car out in terms of purchasing it. But doing the Carfax and then further doing the research of calling the repair shops that showed up on the Carfax really told me what I needed to know, which, hey, this, this car has had some type of catastrophic engine issue and you shouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. So hoping this helps you guys out if you're looking at this type of car on Copart, even if it's rare, even if it's beautiful, even if it's in great shape and has a clean title, do your research and be very careful before you're purchasing this type of thing. Um, as I said at the beginning of the video, someone bought this car now. The auction wasn't supposed to end until midday tomorrow. It's unfortunate, but is what it is. If you don't do your research, sometimes you get burned. So hope this video helped you guys out. Uh, again, kind of a quick one and a little bit of a, a different format than I normally post, but wanted to uh, kind of share this experience with you guys because it's something that you know, when you're in the car world, this stuff can happen and I, I avoided it and I want to make sure that other people avoid this type of thing too. So thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one.